Hi, welcome to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video I'm going to show you how to replace what would be a split petrol tank off this Champion petrol lawnmower. It actually has a, a Mountfield SV150 engine in. Now I've actually bought a modification kit here which is what you will need to do if you've got a split petrol tank. And it, uh, it looks anything like this one here. As you can see here this is the old style starter recoil here. And it's actually a petrol tank and uh, the recoil starter recoil combined. But unfortunately if you've got one of these you probably realise already that uh, they tend to split down the back and leak petrol and I don't know of any good way of uh, fixing them. This part is actually obsolete. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to get this uh, modification kit that I've got here. You can see here if you actually go through it actually shows you the modification kit. And it, as you can tell it's completely different. It's got a separate petrol tank and a separate starter. But you will actually... Uh, um, need to do a, a bit of repair work to get your mower running again if you have had a split tank don't bother looking for that part just to swap it over as it doesn't exist anymore and the ones if you do find one are more likely going to be split than not split also if you buy one to repair for profit and there's no petrol in the tank when you find it at auction or anything like that I'll be very wary of buying it because uh, 9 times out of 10 those tanks are split so with that said here's the modification parts so just in case you need them, the uh, the modification parts are, are here. It's uh, one eight five five zero 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 hyphen two, or you can have part number one one eight five five zero five zero nine forward slash zero. Either of those two will um, be exactly the same. It's the same kit. So as you can see, I've got a separate uh, starter here and a separate petrol tank. So I'm going to show you how to replace this. Uh, what would have been a split petrol tank on this machine. So this kit does actually come with these instructions which um, are reasonably straightforward. You can see there it shows the old style recoil and it also tells you what to do. It doesn't actually explain it, it just shows you diagrams of what you need to do. But uh, just to make this easy I thought I'd film this video. So we're going to start with these three little screws here. We'll just need to undo these three. These, these actually come in the modification kit as you can see here. As you'll notice they're uh, they're actually different lengths, so you do need to uh, you do need to take these off. So we'll start by taking these three out. So using this ten millimetre spanner, you just need to crack these off like that. And basically, just unwind, just unwind all three of these, and just take them off and move them out of the way. I've actually slackened these off just for the purpose of the video. They're normally quite tight. I just need to get these off, and remove from this machine. I've got my three new parts here as you can see but um, they all look identical but actually one of them, one of the three, is slightly shorter. I'm not sure if you can see from that camera angle but this back one here is slightly shorter and the reason for that is it actually sits on the back of the mower here where it's actually raised up. So we'll pop that one in first. This, uh, the flat side here, if you can see here, will just sit against the bottom like that, leaving the side with the, uh, the spanner adjustment on the top. So we'll just wind those in. So I'll start with the back one. I'll just tighten that one up, just finger tight for now, just give it a little turn. That's all you need to do, it doesn't need to be any tighter than that. I'm just going to put this part on the front, there's actually two of these that go on the front. Now, they're never quite level with the back one aren't these, so what you need to do is just build it up a little bit with a few washes. I found that most of the ones I've done have just required a few washes on, because you need it to be nice and level for the pull cord to pull evenly, you don't want it coming off over the top. Of this catch here, you're supposed to replace this by the way, but I know that that's the same part, so I'm going to pop that one in there. I'm going to put some washes on the one at the other side as well and just uh, gently tighten those two up. I've got those three in place as you can see. Now, what you want to do before you carry on is just put this top plate on this, this cover that goes over the top. And just uh, it doesn't need to be exactly level but it does need to be pretty close when you're pulling this cord so as you can see there I've just about got this uh, this bubble in the middle of this spool level here that's pretty good at that side and at this side it's slightly out this is this is uh, too high is this top one so what I'm going to do is just take a couple of washes out of this one and level this off so that's that done I've got this nice and level now everything is level right across and it's important that you do that because when this catch sits in here it actually runs against these little uh, little ridges here and that's what starts the machine otherwise you're going to get them slipping over the top and damaging this uh, starter. The next stage of this is just to undo this uh, this bolt that goes through here 
on the far side of the machine from where I'm sitting. Now what you do is you replace some of these little uh, gadgets. This is where the petrol tank's eventually going to uh, sit onto. So I've just backed that one off. So as you can see here, I'll just pull that out. And then you swap this one over. This is actually sat like that. It's actually got what looks like a, a nut on the other side that's welded to it. As you can see, that actually faces into the machine. So we'll pop that in there. I'm just going to nip that back up. And then we'll just leave that finger tight for now and you'll see why later because it's just a little bit easier to get this petrol tank on. I'll just pat that off slightly just so we can still move this, uh, this fitting about a little bit. I've just brought the, uh, the camera around this side where I'm sitting so as not to confuse you, I thought I'd just point it out so the camera's actually sat at the same side as I am now so I can do the other side of this. This is simply uh, once removing with a 10mm socket. So we've got another little part to put on there so I'm just going to back this off now and take that off. So here's the part I'm going to fit on here, it just fits on with this uh, what looks like a welded a welded nut on the other side, just fits on with that facing into the machine. These are different size uh, Bolts, by the way, they're slightly longer from the ones you take off, so just disregard the ones you've taken off. We'll just pop this in here, and we'll just tighten this up. So I've just noticed, actually, there's uh, there's one thing I've actually missed off, which I should have shown, probably best to show at the beginning, but there's actually a little fitting that goes on here. It's not so much of a job to do, it just means that I might need to alter the height of those washers at the front just to get it a bit more level. I'll check that in a minute, I would imagine that it'd probably be still somewhere near level. If not, I'll uh, just put a couple more washers in each of these front two. So that goes on like that with the hole at the back, as you can see there. So I have actually just had this off and just uh, put a couple more washers under each side of each one. So my fault for missing that out, but I've got that on again, I've got that uh, on there so it's all uh, nice and level again as well I'm still happy with that. Just a quick note because the next phase in this is just to put this, uh, this petrol tank in place and just bolt this on really but it, it actually comes with this uh, this fuel line which isn't attached so before you put it on and bolt it all on it's a lot easier. If you can't get this fuel line on sometimes they're quite tight just boil uh, a cup full of water up just hold this in a cup full of water and just soften this up and you'll find that this actually pushes straight on and straight onto this fuel line and this uh, connector around it. It makes it really easy to get on, you probably can't do it without doing that to be fair. So just melt it in a cup of boiling water for a couple of minutes and push it on and then when it dries uh, and cools down it'll be nice and hard on this uh, pipe and it'll stay on. It just makes it easier than trying to get it on when you've got this, this petrol tank back on this mower. Now the reason for keeping this uh, these loose at the beginning as you can see here is because this petrol tank you have to get it in in three different places there's one there one on the bottom there and as you can see there's one at the far side so it'll be a little bit fiddly to get on so if you just leave these slack it just gives you a little bit of uh, room to manoeuvre as you can see they don't always line up the greatest at first you can tell there there's one underneath which uh, as you can see it's just slightly out of line so you just need to just mess about a little bit don't over tighten anything just get it all nice and lined up and then with the, yeah, the three remaining bolts, just put them back through and we'll just tighten these in. So actually, uh, after just a couple of minutes, I've actually managed to get this in position now. Before you lock everything tight, make sure you lock these mounting bolts to the frame before you lock the petrol tank to the mounting bolts. So it takes a little bit of messing about. I'm just going to tighten everything up. Like I say, make sure you lock it down to the frame before you lock the petrol tank to the mounting bolts and that'll all be nice and tight. You won't have any problems. Now from here on in, it's pretty simple really, we'll just put this, uh, this cover back on here. Push that down, make sure it's nice and flat, as you can see there. That's nicely in position, it'll only go on one way this as well by the way, if you've got everything correct it'll only fit one way. It's a certain shape to fit around this petrol we'll tank. just set this starter recoil, and just drop this in. Make sure it's sat firmly on, on all these... Uh, these threads are showing through. You can see now why it's important to get the height right, otherwise you'll have different length threads coming through the top. And if it's too low, of course, you won't be able to bolt this down securely. I've just noticed that this modification kit didn't actually come with these nuts, and I'm luckily for me in my uh, box of spares, I've actually found three of these that fit. So if you have the old recoil, make sure you keep the nuts because it doesn't come in the kit. And these three, of course, just sit on top of this starter cover, as you can see here. Just put those on. I've also put a washer under there just to stop it breaking the plastic when I tighten it up as well. So I'll put those on and tighten it up. And I'll just show you what we're looking for when this is back together.
So I've now got this job complete. Now I just wanted to explain to you why it's so important that you get this all flat and level at the beginning because when you pull on this cord, you can tell there that's a good tight fit, this recoil, these poles that open up are opening up inside that silver collar. Now if you get this wrong and you've hardly got any threads left or they're too far down, you'll find that this uh, this can actually jump over the top or not operate properly and get stuck. So it needs to pull out probably about uh, six, seven inches and then stop like that. Obviously I've not got the brake pulled at the top and that's how it should fit. There should be no messing about, no slipping over the top. But if you've not got it level, you might find you get problems. So at the beginning, make sure you get it nice and level. Now, as you can tell from the beginning of this machine, it obviously needs a little bit of cleaning up on this, uh, on the uh, the flywheel underneath. It all needs cleaning off. It looks a bit of a mess. You'll know if you've got things on right, because uh, it all lines up here. There's just enough room for this, this uh, the lead, the spark plug lead to come through. So. I'm happy with that, obviously I can't start it up so I've not uh, attached the fuel line yet, I just wanted to get this video done to help anybody out. So that's how I replace a, a fuel tank on this Mountfield SV150, don't forget, if you find one with a cracked tank, don't buy it, because these parts, the modification kit was £35 British pounds, which is, uh, you know, probably more than I pay for this mower, but I wanted to do it on this, it's been in the garden for months, it's probably been the best part of a year to be honest, I'm uh, fed up of seeing it. So... It's got a self-drive on as this one, I've also got the box with it, so I'm hoping to get a bit of money. As you can tell, that looks a lot better than it did when we started the video. So, if you've got an SV50 Mountfield engine with a broken petrol tank, which is the old style, which I've shown you a picture of on the phone, this is what you need to replace it with, and you've got the part numbers now. I hope this video has helped you out. So thanks for watching, if you do like what you see here um, please take a look at the website repairandlawnmowsforprofit.com There's a, a free startup guide for you on there, simple, just download it and take it away um, and have a look at some of the uh, the things that are on the videos as well on there um, Basically thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing to all the people that have subscribed recently and just, uh, I'd just like to apologise, I get so many messages it's just impossible now to uh, to reply to them all but uh, I do my best to get back to uh, as many as I can but thanks very much for watching and uh, please subscribe, rate or leave a comment and uh, I'll see you again shortly.